Hello. I hope you could make it this evening. If not, uh, you can always review the uh, video that I make of this broadcast. So right now we'll start with the subject of Purim. I think you'll find many interesting facts about Purim, which incidentally is today. Purim, facts to know. Purim is the jolliest day of the year for Jews. This jolly festival of Purim is celebrated every year on the 14th of the Hebrew month of Adar, which is in the late winter, early spring. Adar is the last month of the Jewish religious calendar. The 14th of Adar is 31 days before Passover, which is celebrated on Nisan 15th. Note that on the Jewish leap years, there are usually two months called Adar, Adar 1 and Adar 2. At this time, Perm is celebrated in Adar 2 uh, to always keep it just 31 days before Passover. Perm 2019 begins on Wednesday tonight after 6 p.m. So we are officially now in Perm on March 20th and continues through Thursday, March 21st, tomorrow at 6.30 or 6 p.m. it will conclude. It commemorates the salvation of the Jewish people in ancient Persia, Persia from Haman, Haman's insidious plot. His plot was to destroy, kill, and annihilate all the Jews, young and old, infants and women, in a single day. What is Purim? The story in a nutshell. The uh, Persian Empire of the 4th century BC extended over 127 lands and all the Jews were its subjects. When King Ahasuerus divorced his wife, Queen Vashti, the granddaughter of Nebuchadnezzar, he arranged a beauty pageant to find a new queen. A Jewish girl, Esther, found favor in his eyes and became the new queen, though she refused to divulge her nationality as a Jewess. Uh, she, um, her name was Hadassah, her Hebrew name, but she changed it to Esther so as to not appear Jewish. Meanwhile, the Jewish hating Haman was appointed prime minister of the empire. Mordecai, the leader of the Jews and Esther's cousin, defied the king's orders and refused to bow to Haman. Haman was incensed and he convinced the king through subterfuge to issue a decree ordering the extermination of all the Jews on the 13th of Adar, a date chosen by lottery. He was uh, interested in telling the king that, that this group of people were just, they had their own laws and they didn't, they were in defiance of the king's law. And so the king, at that time, who was Esther's husband, didn't realize he was talking about Jews and just agreed to him to uh, let it happen. Mordecai galvanized all the Jews, convincing them to repent, fast, and pray to God. Mordecai convinced Esther, the queen, to intervene. Esther then asked the king and Haman to join her for a feast. At a subsequent feast, Esther revealed to the king her Jewish identity. She accused Haman of plotting to kill her. As a result, the king ordered Haman to be hanged on the very gallows he had prepared for Mordecai. Mordecai was appointed prime minister in his stead. A new decree was issued, granting the Jews the right to defend themselves against their enemies. The king couldn't reverse the order, original order, for Adar 13, because the Persians had a law that a law was sealed by the king, it couldn't be undone. And so the only thing he could do would be to allow the Jews to protect themselves legally against their enemies. On the 13th day of Adar, the Jews mobilized and killed many of their enemies as a result. On the 14th day of Adar, they rested and celebrated. So in Shushan at this time, Purim came one day later, and that became known as the Purim of Shushan, 
uh, which has traditionally always been one day later. So you have two options for celebrating Purim, the first day Purim or the second day. Why is it called Purim? Purim means lots in ancient Persian. The holiday was thus named since Haman had thrown lots to determine when he would carry out his diabolical scheme. You can pronounce this name many ways. In Eastern tradition, it is called Purim. Among Westerners, like us, it is often called Purim. That's what I choose to use as a Purim's uh, pronunciation. Some Central European communities even called it Purim. Purim operations. Reading of the Megillah, Book of Esther, which re recounts the story of the Purim miracle. This is done once on the eve of Purim and then again the following day. The miraculous events behind the holiday of Purim are written in the Megillah, Megillah scroll. This scroll was one of the final books to be canonized in the Tanakh, which is the Hebrew Bible. Today, a genuine Megillah must be writ writ written by uh, a scribe on parchment a painstaking process that takes several days or weeks to complete. Giving money gifts to at least two poor people are one of the requirements on Purim. Sending gifts of two kinds of food to at least one person is another requirement, or tradition, I should say, probably. The festival, festive Purim feast, which often includes wine and other intoxicating uh, beverages, is uh, eaten at that, at that time. Purim is preceded by a fast. Esther 4, 16. Esther says, go gather together all of the Jews who are in Susa and fast for my benefit. I and my attendants will fast just as you do. Don't eat or drink anything for three days. Do it night or day. Then I'll go to the king. I will do it even though it's against the law. And if I have to die, I'll die. If you go into the king unannounced uh, or uninvited, the order is that you will be killed, cut down immediately, unless the king grants you uh, the privilege of entering by raising his scepter. Esther 4.17. So Mordecai went away. He carried out all of Esther's directions. On the day before Purim, on the 13th day of Adar, it is customary to fast, commemorating Esther's fasting and her prayers to God that he saved his people and her. Purim customs. There is a spirit of liveliness and fun on Purim that is unparalleled on the Jewish calendar. It is also customary for children and adults, if they desire, to dress up in costumes. And many adults do participate because there are reasons why they do. A traditional Purim food is hamantash, three-quartered pastries bursting with poppy seeds or other sweets, sweet filling or another sweet filling. Significance of Purim. Purim signifies the Jews survived despite the efforts of their enemies. Purim celebrates God's intimate involvement in every aspect of this world. Additionally, Haman's edict catalyzed a spiritual revival among the Jews at this time. Today, Purim uplifts the Jewish heart to remind them that God always comes to their rescue one way or another. What about the Holocaust, you might uh, say? Where was God uh, when that was happening? You would have thought that would have been a time when he should have come to their rescue. And that's a good question. It's a good observation. Uh, but uh, there are, it is a very good reason why he did not prevent the Holocaust. Without the Holocaust, the state of Israel would not exist today. 
Not sure if you're aware of that fact, but uh, the Prime Minister of, of uh, Israel is aware of that. Uh, Benjamin Netanyahu spoke at the 65th anniversary of the liberation of Auschwitz, Auschwitz in Poland. He stated that the prophecy of Ezekiel 37 had been fulfilled. Can you imagine that? Prime Minister said that Bible prophecy had been fulfilled with regard to Auschwitz in Poland. Ezekiel 37.1, which is the uh, book Netanyahu identified as being fulfilled. The hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of a valley which was full of dry bones. Ezekiel 37.11. Then he said unto me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say our bones are dry and our hope is lost. We are cut off of our parts. Ezekiel 37, 14. And I shall put my spirit in you and ye shall live and I shall place you in your own land. Then shall ye know that I, the Lord, have spoken it and performed it, saith the Lord. Rarely has any world leader given a major address to an on the international stage, declaring end time prophecies from the Bible have come true. That is very significant and should be uh, uh, encouraging for us who all who rely on the Bible and its authenticity uh, for our guidance. You spin your groggers on Purim. What are groggers? Groggers are spinning noisemakers, ratchets used to drown out Haman's name during the Megillah reading. Since every word must be heard clearly, the reader repeats the name after the racket has died down. Although traditionally made of wood, groggers can be made of tin, plastic, or anything else that makes noise. And if you don't have a noisemaker, then pounding on the table or stomping one's feet or even shaking one's keys will be good enough. People drink wine on Purim. How much wine do they drink? The sages of the Talmud assert that a person is obligated to drink on Purim until he does not know the difference between blessed is Mordecai and cursed is Haman. That's a, that yeah, speaks volumes as far as a person's uh, awareness at that point in time if he drinks that much. Obviously, this does not apply to anyone who may become ill or act inappropriately when intoxicated. Perm treats. Uh, we mentioned uh, Amintosh, and there's also Kreplot. God's involvement in perm, the Perm miracle was hidden. It appears as if the Jews' salvation came by way of their own efforts because they were the ones that were defending themselves, even though it was a miraculous uh, event that allowed them to be given that permission. Therefore, the day is celebrated with delicacies where the delicious filling is hidden inside the dough. Classic hamantash are a sweet three-cornered pastry filled with poppy seeds. And meat-filled preplok are traditionally cooked and served and chicken soup at the festive meal. The seeds recall Esther's vegetation diet in the royal palace where she secret, secretly kept kosher. Jews masquerade on Purim. People traditionally dress up on Purim, wear masks or otherwise make themselves look somewhat unusual. Like the hidden treats mentioned above, Many say that concealing oneself behind a costume reflects the way God operated behind a cloak of natural events. Jews also dress differently on Purim to minimize the embarrassment of the poor who go around collecting charity on this day, a day when Jews give charity to everyone who outstretches their hand. Purim in history. Historically, 
all too often, Jewish communities have narrowly escaped catastrophe. More often than not, the plot involves an evil tyrant who follows the ways of Haman. And just like the Purim story, God often is there to save his people from certain doom. In modern times, the plans of some of the Jews' worst enemies had been thwarted on the very day of Purim. Early in the 1950s, Joseph Stalin had bloody plans for dealing with the Jewish prophet, as he defined it. Sounds very much like the Third Reich under Hitler who had a Jewish problem. After spreading his toxic rumors about Jews to the public, Stalin carried on with his plans to eliminate Russia's two to four million Jews. He made plans to deport them to the freezing uninhabited regions of Russia and leave them there to die of starvation, cold, and disease. He was having uh, buildings built that would house them, but uh, were very insufficient uh, for their needs. However, ironically enough, Stalin was suddenly paralyzed on March 1st, 1953, which corresponds to Purim, 1953, and he died four days later. That is very remarkable, in my opinion, that he died, uh, uh, was put out of commission on the day of Purim. In August 1990, Saddam Hussein attacked Kuwait. The US-led forces started their opposition on January 17, 1991. 39 missiles were fired at Israel, which killed two people, and 12 others died of accidents involving gas masks or, or other procedures. After 42 days, the US-led forces were quickly victorious and the hostilities abruptly ended on Purim, March 28, 1991. Right on the very day, Purim, that uh, was another uh, remarkable coincidence. The Gulf War continued 12 years later, as we, will, we are well aware, after the uh, towers are, are, were, were destroyed. On March 19, 2003, George W. Bush publicly announced that the Gulf War II had begun. Purim 203 occurred on March 17 and 18, one day, before, one day earlier. However, Purim Shushan, remember I told you, began on March 18, 19, 203. Remember, Purim Shushan was one day later. So the day George uh, W. Bush announced the Gulf War would continue, it was on Purim Shusha. It is significant that the two Gulf Wars were separated exactly 12 years by the Hebrew calendar, and both involved Purim. And that is significant when you think of uh, how we view the number 12 from a biblical perspective. King Jesus. Did Jesus celebrate Purim? Jesus likely celebrated the Feast of Purim in John 5. John 5, 1, after this was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now, Jesus was an observant Jew, and so uh, he celebrated probably all of the uh, festivals when he was available or could make them, but especially the ones that were required. This was not a required festival. But nevertheless, it appears in John 5 that he went up to Jerusalem during a feast. Well, the question is, what feast was this? There's widespread agreement that this uh, was in the spring of 28 AD when Jesus, when John uh, 5, 1 refers to uh, the spring of 28 AD. Chronologically, the only feast that makes sense is Purim in 28 AD. John 5, 9 and immediately the man was made whole and took up his bed and walked. And on the same day was the Sabbath. This was a healing Jesus performed, but the point we wanted to really uh, focus on is the fact that it was a Sabbath on the feast day, because this was on the feast day also. The only feast day to fall on a Sabbath between AD 25 and AD 35 was Purim of AD 28. 
thank you much very much for uh, watching this with me. Uh, you can review it on the internet, uh, YouTube internet video that I've made of this. And I certainly appreciate being able to give this message to you.